Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in my modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about something that has a fun name, LERP. Uh, maybe you've heard of this if you're coming from the game development world or implementing clustering algorithms, but LERP stands for linear interpolation. So let's go ahead and look at this function that's defined in the CMath, but also part of our numeric algorithms. So I'm going to go ahead and dive into CPP reference here. We're going to go into the numeric algorithms. And if I scroll down here, you'll see under interpolation operations, we have LERP here, which stands for linear interpolation. Now, previously, we looked at the midpoint function in a previous lesson. So make sure you check that out. And otherwise, stay subscribed so you don't miss these lessons. But we found there were some interesting precision issues to deal with with midpoint. And it turns out that LERP is, again, one of those functions that's kind of hard to get right. But let's go ahead and see if we can drive it ourselves and see if we run into some problems. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is just illustrate what the LERP function is. So again, LERP, which is linear interpolation. And I'll draw my eye properly here. Interpolation. It's basically this idea that we want to pick a point in between something. So again, we're sort of working in one dimension, although you can build this function up if you want to work in two dimensions to do bilinear interpolation or trilinear interpolation. But the basic idea is if I have some number line like this here, and let's just go ahead and pick two random values like 10 and 110, I want to go ahead and figure out what's the value that's halfway in between here. So to represent this, I'll say t equals 0. 5f, a floating point value here, and I want to figure out what that value is here. Now, you could probably go ahead and look at this or even try to drive it, but let's just try to think it through. If I take this value minus this value, 110 minus 10 here, that sort of gives me the range or the length here of this total line here, okay? And I want something that's halfway in between, which is what I specified here. T, you can sort of think about that as the time to travel along this distance or a percentage. And then, well, where's my starting point? That's what I'm going to add here. So that's the linear interpolation function. So normally we label this as A and B for our start and our finish. Doesn't matter if these functions or these values are negative or positive. Either way, we'll find the value in between based off of this value here. So again, to write it out, A plus T times B minus A. Okay, so that's an equation you can look about, but it's kind of fun to derive or even think about yourself whenever you encounter one of these fun functions. Again, it's very useful in mathematics, in the game programming world, for instance. Like, let's say I've got a character here. I'm going to draw a guy here. And let's say that they are traveling to some point here, like the user presses an arrow key. And then we want to teleport this character over here. And there he is. And they're moved over to this position. So the issue with this is if I just jump this you know, unit here, or sort of teleport, which is known as teleporting or causes issues with tunneling and other multiplayer games is again, it's kind of jagged if we're just rushing from one section to the other. But if I'm able to linearly interpolate over time here, that gives a smooth movement. So over 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, for instance. Now there's also various, um, and I'll just leave this down here, easing functions, if you're in the, the game world and want to take a look at these for sort of smoothly moving one character uh, to a position or to model, say, acceleration and deceleration here. OK, so again, some different ways that you can use these functions to get nice movement in your games. But this also applies if you're not a game developer and want to do things like perhaps user interface, kind of smoothly moving widgets or something around on a screen. But anyways, that's the idea with the LERP function. Now, let's go ahead and implement this function here, and then let's compare it with the C++ standard library implementation. I mean, in fact, is it even worth having this? Again, sometimes you see some of these functions in the standard library, and you're like, well, that's easy enough to implement, right? It's just this simple function here. Well, just a little hint, just like with the midpoint uh, that we saw earlier, it turns out it can sometimes be a little bit hard to work with numbers here. And the reason it's hard to work with numbers is... Well, computers are discrete, so we have to think a little bit about how we implement these. So I'm going to go ahead and just implement our lerp function here, and I'll just call it lerp. And again, it's going to take in a float for the beginning position, A, the ending position, B, and T is sort of where we are. I like to think about it as a percentage over time to get from A to B. Again, that sort of warping effect. And then we'll just go ahead and return A plus the T value, B uh, minus A from our formula. 
And let's go ahead and make sure we have a multiplication sign there. And that's it. So let's go ahead and confirm here with some examples that this works here. So we'll go ahead and put in lerp. Uh, and let's do the example that we did here with 110 and 0.5. And again, I'm going to use floating point values here. So I'll be careful to uh, put those in and an end line. And let's go ahead and make sure this works here. And we get our value of 60. So again, that should work out here. 110 minus 10 is 100 times 5 is uh, 0.5. 50 plus 10 is in fact 60. Okay, so our function is working. And we could try out a few more versions of this. Like let's go ahead and try, for instance, uh, 0.0, .0 and 1.0 f. And let's go ahead and interpolate all the way over to one side. So you can kind of think of it, this as a weighting of how close we are to B, which if we're 100% of the way there, then well, we're at 1.0 here. So let's go ahead and run this function here. And of course, we get the value one here. Now, I could go ahead and crank this up here. Let's try 1.1 and see what happens. Uh, and it's still going to work here, right? We're just moving that interval uh, further, 10% past, you know, whatever this range is. So that sort of makes sense. So we can still do that. That's still uh, legal in our alert function. Um, okay, and let's go ahead and try this in the other direction here. Let's try something like uh, reversing so that a is the greater value here. Uh, the B value can be, I don't know, zero. And then maybe we are uh, all the way over at the value of A here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and try that out here. And do we in fact get uh, 100,000 here? We do, okay? Um, so it looks like our lerp function uh, is working quite nicely. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at C++ reference here and see what lerp gives us. Now, this is part of the numeric library, but do notice that it's included in C math. Um, again, I don't know if it's supposed to be in numeric or how that decision was made, but this feels like a math function, so that's reasonable. So anyways, lerp will handle floats and doubles and even long double values. Um, and again, this looks exactly like our function signature. We've got the float A, float B, and then T, which is sort of the how far along we are. And we can see from the C++ reference page, we derive the correct formula here. And that's the idea. And again, note that it is saying that, you know, we should provide the T value, the linear interpolation. So inter within some interval, otherwise we're getting the linear extrapolation. Okay. So outside of, but should still be able to compute that uh, without any problems here. Okay, so let's go ahead and move along here. Now, I don't know what this C++ uh, 23 section is exactly saying. I think it handles all the different versions of like const and, and so on here. Um, uh, that's what I believe I see here. Um, okay, and let's go ahead and take a look here. Now, it's got a little bit of interesting stuff here. Now, it says it's handling, okay, if t is 0 and the result's equal to a, t is 1, result's equal to b. I mean, that sort of makes sense here. Um, so again, we could improve our function, right? If if t is exactly 1.0 or 1 or whatever, right, we know to just return the value of b. So already you could imagine improving this implementation. So again, this is another great in, uh, interview question or an exercise for you to think about, well, how would I make this much more efficient? And again, in the use case that I gave here with, say, a game here where we're moving characters very often, that could be a really important thing to actually handle, right? To have this super optimized function. So it looks like this is uh, being handled in the STL. Of course, we'd want to profile it when it comes to performance. But what I'm saying is it looks like there's a lot of interesting uh, corner cases here. So let's go ahead and see. Now, there are some interesting is uh, finite functions here and so on. Um, but let's go ahead and just take a look at an example here. And again, see if we can convince ourselves that maybe we'll just want to use the STL version or otherwise very carefully craft our implementation uh, so that it works in all cases. Um, now, it is sort of interesting here looking through this uh, with these values, 1E8F. Okay, so like a really big value, 100, uh, let's see, eight zeros here. Uh, let's see if that uh, changes our value here. Let's add some more uh, zeros here. Um, let's see. Okay, so it seems like that's still uh, working here. Uh, let's see, I want to get 1E8. Okay. Um, so, well, that seems uh, reasonable here. Uh, let's see what else we got here as far as our uh, functions. Like, is this working or why is this working better here? So, interestingly, midpoint, which we learned about in the previous video, is basically just a calculation of LERP, right? Halfway through. So, it looks like 
you could use this function, but again, if you literally want the midpoint of something, you should probably just use uh, midpoint, right? That's very descriptive, the function that's telling uh, what you're doing and by the function name, you know, why you're doing it. You want to calculate the midpoint versus lerp. Maybe somebody just guessed, you know, halfway is a good value for whatever reason. Okay. Um, all right. So anyways, uh, let's see. So standard lerp is exact. Okay. So what does it mean by this? Well, our values A and B. So uh, we're able to get the value a back and we're able to get the value b back right when we interpolate uh, zero that means we're getting a when we interpolate one that means we're getting b here it says naive lerp uh is that exact uh well let's go ahead and see it looks like it's actually returning uh well true uh for this instance and hmm false for this instance here with 1.0 okay interesting so maybe let's try to change our value here b equals 1.0 uh, and then we have this really big value here with a floating point value let's let's see what happens here if we just carefully maybe craft some of these examples or corner cases uh, so i'm going to make this 1.0 okay so let's go ahead and see what happens uh, when i lerp that looks okay i seem to get this you know large value here uh, but let's see if i uh, go the other way and interpolate so that i get this value i mean i should get the value 1.0 right i'm all the way to the uh, B range here. Uh, so again, let's go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and run it. Uh, and I get zero. Interesting here. Hmm. So this is kind of interesting if I do the math in my head here, where I do, let's see, one is B minus this really big value. Okay, that gives us some uh, negative value times one. So I got this really big negative value, and then I've got uh, this value minus, well, something like, one less than this value. So I should be getting one here, but I get a zero, okay? So we're running into an arithmetic error. And the goal of this, or how to explain it is, um, if you check out uh, this link here, let me go ahead and open it up here. And then you can open up the actual uh, paper here, uh, which I've got. Uh, we can actually see there are some exactness issues in the naive implementation here, uh, which is saying in general, it doesn't reproduce the value here. You could have some sort of uh, overflow if you have uh, large exponents for opposite signs here. Okay. So as far as how the floating point is represented here with a large exponent value here, right? We had one E uh, to the eighth here. Um, that's what's causing the problem here. Okay. So let's already get to the root of this and include... Uh, CMath, which is where standard lerp is. And simply put, I'm going to go ahead and take these functions here. And let's go ahead and just put a end line here, just so you can see the difference. And let's go ahead and see if it produces the right value. Uh, now, the edit that I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this block here and I'm simply going to replace lerp with standard lerp. And let's go ahead and see what values we get here. So I'll go ahead and rerun this. 60, that works, that's the same. Uh, I get one for both these values. One uh, here as well. Here seems to be correct, again, on the side uh, of the first parameter, uh, which is also correct here. But now I actually get the right value here. So this one was wrong. Uh, and let's actually, just to make this very explicit here, uh, let's go ahead and just put a little uh, line here, so, so you can see you know, wrong. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, let's put a little uh, space here. There we go. Uh, this one here, though, right, if I'm interpolating all the way towards my B value 1.0, I should be getting one back here. Okay, which I do here. So again, the easy case here would just be to have the shortcut and say, well, if this value is one, right, just go ahead and pick this one, right? Don't even do the formula and have the issue with like an overflow with the exponents with your floating point values. These are some things that I think are going to be, you know, kind of nasty bugs to catch yourself sometimes. But if you don't know, you don't know, right? Um, you know, the, the naive lerp function is the one that I've written forever and used. And then I just sort of asked myself, what is the point? Why does this belong in the standard library? Well, it's a function that I think enough folks have been you know, bitten by, or maybe um, had some weird bug that they had to track down that they eventually said, yeah, let's get a standard function that, you know, should at least capture some of these cases here. Now, of course, if you need your own version with more precision or whatever, you know, maybe there's different ways to implement your own and to optimize them. But again, the standard library one uh, is nice to have 
uh, to catch those corner cases. Alrighty, folks. So hopefully that makes sense. You can read, you know, a little bit about some of the other issues that happens with infinite numbers and so on. It's getting a little bit in the weeds of stuff, but I think it's still interesting uh, and to look at some of these papers. Uh, so anyways, with that said, folks, I uh, hope you're enjoying my C++ series. You can sign up on courses.msha.io and track your progress through these lessons. So you can make sure that you're seeing the midpoint video and now the LERP video. Uh, and I do have a C++ course now that I'm advertising because I think it'll be great for uh, beginners or if you know somebody just getting started with C++ who wants to do a quick, you know, crash course and not pick through all the videos here, uh, you can get through one coherent lesson uh, all in that course. So go ahead, check that out. Let me know what you think uh, and enjoy it. And otherwise, folks, thanks as always for your support. Thanks for your time and attention. And hopefully you learned something. Let me know if there's other math functions that you know about that can stumble into these problems. Uh, let me know if you're doing something cool with LERP. Let me know if you've done a bilinear interpolation or um, some cool effect with it. Uh, you know, used it for some noise function. Maybe that could be interesting. Uh, but anyways, folks, thanks as always. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.